Hello and welcome everyone. We are here again with uh, James, uh, James and James, in fact, uh, sculpting Canada on a mantis. So James, we have made some progress since last week. Uh, if uh, anyone looking at the screen won't know what progress we've made, because that's actually where we left it off. Uh, so what are yes. we going to be doing today? Yes, I thought we would um, uh, we would start where we left off, um, just just to show you know the end of the sketch that we did from the last session, um, and this this it was a very loose sketch, um, but it, it was really fun to kind of explore uh, where we could take the character on on a, on a mount because it was a <laughs> it was a crazy idea, um, and but and of course we didn't have any concept art, so it was a it was great to kind of cut that out and and we already knew what the character looked like but yeah we didn't know what he look, would look like on a mount and you know um yeah, ha, ha, what his mount would look like as well so that's it yeah exactly so it was good fun so, to sort of explore it and so we did some cool uh, kind of i guess experimentation with the posing really and then looking at this yeah. uh, z spheres uh that's business. correct yeah, uh, but you have uh, done a little bit of work in between now and then, have you not? I certainly have, and so here whoa, is whoa. um, whoa, it's a bit, a little bit different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, very different. Um, yeah, so I, I've been able to progress the sculpt quite a lot actually since we last, since the last session. Um, I've been able to sculpt the well. I've, I, I'm nearly done with the mantis now, actually, in terms of sort of get, getting its its anatomy where I want it to be. And 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 actually, part of the job was to 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 think about what how we could make a mantis into a miniature because yeah. um, it would be it would be very difficult to make uh, an accurate mantis because of the thin parts that it's got yeah. some very thin legs and and um, it, it would be quite difficult so we've had to make some concessions um, I think in a good way actually for for, for the miniature um, the main one being the obvious one um, is obviously the legs because what we've we've kind of made them sort of into an armored um kind of big thick they're almost like crab legs actually yeah with kind of go into points and i yeah, kind well, of yeah uh we discussed yeah. that didn't we um, off air we sort of said we're gonna have yeah. to fudge uh fudge it slightly and one arthropod uh is much like another um i hope there are no <laughs> arthropods listening uh, <laughs> to be terribly offended um uh, but yeah we uh, you know um i think it's a, a, a a concept that most people who love miniatures are familiar with the idea that if you reproduce that um, something from life uh, and you just scale it down to that scale without any alteration of the proportions you're going to end up with something that doesn't actually look like what it started out as you know you're looking at a person while while flying over a city from an airplane you know they just look like a blob um so you actually have to blow up the proportions and have bigger arms and bigger heads and bigger faces yeah. and bigger weapons yeah. proportionally yeah. in order for them to look right at scale yes exactly it's um you, you kind of of course i've got this massive on the screen but if you if you if i was to scale it down you can just ignore the uzi and the whole stuff um i mean that we that's kind of what we should be thinking about it that it's actually going to you know produce a much smaller scale so yeah um it, yeah it's important to kind of have that in the back of your mind when you're designing these things um it, it's it, it's a big big factor um and yeah and of course too small it's going to be it's going to it may it, it, it will impact the the overall kind of look and feel of, of the model yeah sure. and also just from your perspective you know you're wasting you're wasting time uh, exactly. uh you know laboring yeah. over detail which is never ever going to yeah. be reproduced Yes, that that exactly. You you could you could spend a lot of time sculpting detail um, and and for it not to produce. So of course I I've got a very tight schedule as well. So I don't want to be sitting there wasting my time doing that when I of could course. be doing other other yeah. models. So yeah, it's it's uh, what I found that it's it's something that you learn as you go and you learn kind of what will reproduce and what won't and having yep. sort of my own miniatures that i've sculpted in my hands that have been printed out and cast that 
that was a real help for me because um, then I can look, I, I can look at it and say, well, that was a waste, you know, that, that piece of hair was a waste of time or, yeah. you know, um, whatever hasn't produced, I, I will, I will take note of and then bring it into the next sculpt. That yeah, into absolutely. The next sculpt. So um, why yeah. don't you um, zoom in a little bit and yeah. show us the different features and sort of discuss what you've done a little bit so far in a bit, in a bit more detail. Yes, of course. Um, I know. So, I know what uh, uh, what people want. They're like, oh, I want to see it. I want to get right <laughs> <to> there. And... <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so let's start with the head because yeah. um, I think really one of the things that I really struggled to get right, and actually in the last session it was I was a bit I was kind of struggling a bit was the actual sh overall shape of the mantis head because it's yeah. quite it's it's got a kind of unique shape definitely yeah yeah. Um, and and to get the eyes because the eyes are really they're just awesome they're just so such a unique feature i so can really get... see that such a big wide surface that all the painters are going to do some crazy freehand like segmented painting on those <laughs> yes exactly i'll also show you there is an option for to have that that actually in the sculpt so we can do that and experiment with it and if it doesn't work then we can um, th then we can ditch it. But um, right, that's well, interesting. Yeah. Really fun thing to show you guys. Yeah. Um, that, that that we can do, um, and I think it will come out in the print as well, which would be awesome. So it'd be great. Yeah. It would be. It's one of those awesome features that are great for for washes and and, and stuff like that. Mm. It would be. It would look pretty cool. But I'll leave it to you to see if it works or not. Uh, but it's something that I can show you quite quickly anyway. Cool. So thought that would be quite a cool thing um so yeah so it, uh, this is oh, if i just isolate this so for the man <laughs> i've actually um it's not exactly like a, a mantis head uh, just to go back on what you were saying before it, yeah it, i've really kind of accentuated the mantis kind of features and also designed my own kind of carapace style kind of face yeah um, because i looking at the reference that i had it, it, it it had that kind of this kind of breakup of the surface but it was very it wasn't distinct enough for me to kind of sculpt accurately if yeah. i sculpted it like it it would have just got lost in the cast casting and printing process yeah so i kind of needed something with a bit more impact so i kind of it was a design a design decision on the fly that i made to to design my own kind of kind of carapace armor well it definitely yeah. works for me i mean yeah. at, at the end of the day uh any insect experts i think we said this last week any insect experts who are you know what watching in disgust at the uh, <laughs> at, uh the lack of uh, accuracy uh can please send us some reference photos of three meter high mantises um and then we'll uh reproduce them perfectly right Exactly. Yes. Um, yeah. Please send us some reference, and we'll completely ignore it and just have a, have fun <laughs> doing what we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what I what I'm thinking now is that definitely the the mantis has got to have some pretty decent armor. I reckon. Yes. Um, so, I mean, I've I've that the face was the first uh, element I I did that on, and, and actually that, that kind of. That, that that's literally what I do with other other things really. If I kind of start with a face, I've always quite fond of doing faces and sculpting faces, yep. and and that that tends to lead the design quite a lot. So I kind I kind of wanted to nail the face, um, or le at least get get it straight in my head what I wanted to do, um, and then carry that across the rest of the of the creature as such. And so really, what I've been able to do, um, if I zoom out and just show you some of the legs. So I, I mean I, I'm assuming everyone's familiar with what a mantis looks like, but I mean it, it, it praying mantis. But if you're not, then I mean the, the um, a mantis's legs. They I, I've kind of mirrored the the shape, the general shape of of the mantis, and that the legs kind of the back legs go quite high up and back yeah. from the body, but they cut they kind of jut down as well. They kind of come down in this sort of shape, and then they and then he's that they they have sort of uh, four legs that kind of go a little bit. A little bit more shallow um so what i was able to do is mirror the kind of um uh, or at least imitate sorry the, the 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 shape the general kind of shape of the legs or the direction um but of course what i've what i've done is i've i've made them a lot bulkier 
and then I've added this kind of carapace armor to the outsides of them and then kind of sculpted a, a what I, I suppose is a fleshier softer in internal muscular sort of uh, aspect to them as well um, which which I which I had really good fun doing and it's actually it's going to be a lot easier for us to um, to, to, to cast and make this model um, uh, from that um, so and then on the other on the other side you can see we, we've got the, uh, the we, we've got exactly the same kind of setup um, I'm in a second I'm going to finish this other this this part here I'm going to show you how I sculpted it and then oh, okay. we're going to mirror it over onto the other side that sounds um, cool which is going to be pre pretty good fun we're going to have some fun with that and a lot of these so for, for the for these legs I was able to actually if I if I just select one then kind of hide it now I was playing with putting spikes on here so I thought I'd leave that on there so to show you yeah um, I thought this was a little bit it didn't quite work for me uh, and so I actually kind of settled on these kind of spiky bits here which I think look much better yeah um, a little bit like the inside of um, uh, the other previous miniature I did vet Papa Venk uh, on his weapon and these should reproduce quite nicely I think on on the casting and printing yeah um, whereas I just felt this was a, looked a little bit I don't know it didn't look right on there it um, looks slightly out of place I think yeah does. so let's let's I think probably the the issue is that it looks more like a mammalian horn than it does a kind of bit of carapace yes exactly uh, but but saying that one of the and this is going back to the design of Canada um, if I turn back on uh, Canada's miniature um, yeah. you can see he has got and in fact all of the miniatures in the firm have this kind of horn kind of, yeah a lot of these horn features uh, yeah on there so I kind I think of, they're supposed to be raptor claws actually and when I say I think right. I know because you know my idea <laughs> <laughs> yes raptor claws so I mean it, exactly it, it was kind of I wanted to carry that over but it just yep. didn't quite work so whether we do it on on the saddle or other features that 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 might well I just wanted to mirror sort of Canada's general yeah. design yeah I think that would look really cool in the uh, in the saddle if we can keep that sort of visual continuity going yeah. but actually I really like the stark contrast between the mantis and uh, you know his his rider because it's such a crazy alien thing isn't it it is. It's. 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 It. It looks quite ferocious, actually. Yeah. I, I'm. I'm looking forward to. I mean, basically, to give this as a design overview. This. The, the. The miniature itself is at the moment is very. Of course, it's very symmetrical because I've been designing it symmetrically. Yeah. Um, but I'm hoping that we'll be able to add a little bit more asymmetry to to the overall sort of piece and add a bit more composition to it. So. That, right. Um, we can make it look a little bit more ferocious and one of, and the other thing is just to make it look like he's riding it you know like in turn, it, it looks a little bit too um static at the moment yeah so i'm hoping we'll be able to do that tonight um but it will, will definitely be something that we'll feature in the final sculpt that's for sure. yeah um, we, we'll be making it a lot more dynamic um but the, the the focus so far has really been for me um it, it, it's getting the overall structure uh, and anatomy and and uh, actually a design direction because we didn't have that when we first started so yeah yeah absolutely yeah. and that was why that initial uh, initial session was so important for me because um, I in a lot of my work even even if I've got a concept there are a lot of things like I mean, I normally get the front of a concept so I normally have to design the back of a miniature myself so there will be a lot of times at the very start of a minute doing a miniature where I'm kind of scratching my head thinking, well, what do I do there? What do yeah. And, and it is a, it's quite a searching process. Um, so it, it, it's, it, it, it was interesting to watch myself back on the last session and, and realize that's kind of how I go about doing stuff. It's, it's a case of doing everything wrong until you get it right. <laughs> if yeah. that makes sense. And it's, <laughs> no, it, I, it makes perfect sense. It makes perfect sense. It's the iteration. <laughs> Uh, exactly you yeah keep it's, on it's, refining out the mistakes until you've got something uh, you're really happy with but that's the creative process anyway i think for a lot of people i think it's it's um it, it, it's it's just perseverance and um pushing things around until you, until you get it right and uh 
and that's what's so fun about the digital medium actually and what where it what, what i always have fun with is is that you can you can iterate quite easily yeah. you can experiment and you can um it, it's a little bit faster so you can kind of afford to make mistakes and and go down a certain design route and realize you know and then go and then rein it in and then go down another design route mm. it, it's it's uh it, that it's quite it, it's good very good fun in that that respect um so it it definitely helps when designing uh miniatures that way um especially as with miniatures you don't have to be as detailed so yeah you can sort of uh, go back and it's not 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 a big loss so where are we going to start then is the, it's a, the question on everyone's <laughs> lips i reckon <laughs> well we've got so we we've got this bit here but i i tell you what as i've mentioned it and we started there shall we have a look at the um at the face because I, I i want to make some of the features a little bit deeper on here but the yep. other first thing i think we're going to do is is actually have a little play to see if we can and i want to get your opinion on this but um to see if we can make these eyes because of course they're ah, very smooth okay. yeah yeah but but um of, of course on a real mantis they're kind of segmented aren't they 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 kind of got this pattern on them which is which is quite it's quite an interesting kind of pattern now yeah. i don't know if this will reproduce properly but because this is quite a large miniature it might be something that we can do yeah um, and it might make it look really awesome so i, I will let, let's let's do it now and um and see if see what you think um it's on the surface so i've actually already set this up because um and the head <laughs> this time um so what i've what i've been able to do so i, I mean i've got this uh, retopologize this head and um i've actually separated the eyes on the in the topology using groups right. so, so i don't know if uh, people uh, how many people who are watching now were watching last week who mm. don't know much about zbrush but the dark areas are you've masked off so that you can't right. uh, whatever you do you're not going to accidentally affect them and the eyes are not masked because that's what you want to work on that's right. So, um, it, yeah. So, if if I, I can actually use um, put a mask on this, and then if I try and sculpt uh, something on here, um, it actually won't sculpt over the masked area. Yeah, so, I see. Um, which is quite a very very useful feature. Yeah, I now, can imagine it's really useful for uh, yes, particularly definitely. for sculpting. Well, masking is is really a fundamental part of digital sculpting for me. It's it's one yeah. of the most useful features and yeah. Actually, it's fairly underused. I, I I always feel when I watch other people work. Um, it's yeah. a very very powerful feature. Um, but the other thing that makes it extremely powerful is that you can use it in in conjunction with what are called poly groups. So, um, yeah, they, basically on on the screen here you've got the the head of the mantis, and then I, I it's been retopologized. So you see all of these squares of I, I've actually remade rebuilt the head using using new topology, um, and what I'm able to do after that fact is actually polygroup um, certain areas so that they are, I can actually easily separate them. So of course you've got the different uh, the, the eyes are different color because there are different polygroups. So yeah, this may, allows me to uh, to isolate them, uh, and then what I can do then is add a mask to that area that's been isolated, and then we add the rest of the model and then reverse that mask and then hey presto I've literally got the eyes as an unmasked area so cool. now if i sculpt anything um you can see it's actually it looks like eyes well, now he looks angry <laughs> <laughs> um uh, you can see it doesn't affect the rest of the model so it's yeah. coming we'll see why this comes in real handy with this noise system so if i click i've actually already set this up um so but if i click noise here you'll see it adds these hexagons there. okay now, yeah. i had a play with this and and i don't think when i looked at the reference i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure but i kind of don't think they're precise hex hexagons or, or whatever i these don't things. think they are i mean i've never looked at a mantis under a microscope no. I, think, <laughs> I don't I think, think they, they are segmented eyes but i don't think they're those kind of fly hexagon eyes that you're that you're used to seeing so I had um so I had that thought as well and and I and I thought well this is the nearest thing I can get to it so then what I did is I um another 
masking thing you can do is um i mean i've applied this noise it's called no, uh, noise maker and it basically lets you repeat a pattern right. across the surface um uh, so if i edit this you, you'll be able to see and you get this little window up and it lets me add all different patterns onto yeah. that area that i've masked off so if i go to edit on here um, i can add all, all these different kind of effects on here so i can use spirals and you can see it kind of changes the model here it's quite small but hopefully you can all see that um and, then, and i can add sort of corrugated effects or a brick effect um camouflage all sorts of different stuff yeah um i found the i found the hex tile to be the closest to what i want but of course it's a little bit too sharp for for our needs but what i what i found I kind of found a way of going about it that produced something quite interesting. So the other thing you can do with this noise is you can make it into a mask. So there's this feature here, mask by noise. And what that's going to do is turn that noise into a mask. Right. Instead of like a, like a 3D feature. Um, now, I can do all kinds of stuff with this now. But what, what I'm going to do is inflate it up. Right. I'm probably a little bit too much. But using the mask... And then ah, okay, right. I'm going to yeah. blur this, and there you go. Yeah, yeah. Kind of got that. That, in fact, that might be a little bit too much. I might want to retain that. And that kind of, for me, that kind of looked a bit. It might be too big, but I wondered what if that or, you know or not not deep enough. I have. A, I mean, I, I I don't know why I'm trying to teach you what you <laughs> what you're doing, but I I suspect that if it looks too big, it's probably right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I thought it was a neat effect, and I thought, yeah, well, do you know what? Work. I am totally undecided. I can't. I, I actually, I quite like it. I do quite like it, but I'm not sure whether I like it more or less um, and, and than without. Than without, yeah. yeah. I think the important yeah. thing is try is is um, I'll get a um, off camera. Obviously, you know, we'll carry on from here. We obviously don't need to make any snap decisions, but I think. Um, I'll get a ruler out and see how big that head's really going to be, and 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 then look at a uh, yeah. look at your image of it and try and uh, work out exactly how it's going to um, look to scale. Yes, exactly. I, I mean, one one thing I, I kind of had in mind is I wanted to create a nice surface for painters to be able to kind of um, have a bit of fun with because it, as I say, the face is especially of the mantis. It's going to yeah. be we're going to make it look pretty epic. I, I well, at least I'm hoping to. So um, we want it to be an area where the where painters can really let go and have have a bit of fun. And um, I, I I kind of like to add surface detail like that 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 you can use washes over and yeah. you know, can have a bit of fun like that with. But it might be better to have a, a plain flat surface like this. People might have more fun with that. I don't know. So it's definitely something um that we can we can think about anyway um, yeah i thought yeah, i'd throw absolutely. that one at you <laughs> under pressure so, live on air <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah um well it, the other thing is it's a very fun thing to show people because it's quite yeah strong. yeah because it looks really cool uh it's yeah. just whether whether it'll whether it'll translate or not that's the uh the difficult question i think yeah well let, let's let's crack on and um, and finish this head off then so i'm um I mean, it's nearly done now, but I just want to make these these features a little bit more de uh, deep because, um, and then bring out the carapace a little bit more, yep. just so that um, peace of mind really, and to finish off the sculpt. Um, so, I'm so just you're just adding definition and sharpening up, uh, deep yeah. in the recesses and sharpening up the the hard edges. Yes. Yeah. So well, just... that's going to please every painter. <laughs> I hope so. Yes. I hope so. I hope, they... <laughs> I hope they're not all secretly hating me at the moment. They're thinking, don't do anything with those eyes. Why do I have to paint all that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is something that I've kind of learned to do. Um, a good friend of mine, actually, uh, Michael, he, he taught me how to, he taught me how to think about, you know, sculpting the miniature, um as as you think it will look so you know zooming right out and and, yeah. and thinking about it um thinking about how it's going to actually look when it's printed uh, as yeah. opposed to massive on the screen um 
Uh, so I kind of it's a habit that I've tried to get into to try and you know um, accentuate the details even yeah. more so for, for my miniatures. Um, actually, it does work both ways as well, and I found myself doing it for larger sculpts, and it's not actually good for larger sculpts. It can make them look really odd. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of um, it's knowing when to switch it on and switch it off. Um, that, that, that I'm having problems with at the moment, but you're lucky at the moment I'm in miniature mode, so <laughs> um, I kind of, uh, it's kind of comes second nature to me. I'm just using the Damien standard brush to um, to kind of create these surfaces. It's a good, I think I mentioned it last session, but it's an excellent brush to create surfaces with yeah. um, and, and design features and and some of these of course won't be picked up by the print but i think most of it will do and um it's just a good just a fun bit, bit of sculpting to do really yeah um so as you probably noticed i've got i've got symmetry on as well because everything is a little bit more symmetrical uh at this stage in the sculpt um, yeah and i guess this uh you're probably not you know, I imagine a mantis's head is pretty symmetrical either way. I don't think they're a great deal of moving parts. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that uh, yeah, I don't. Th it's funny because when I was looking at the um, when I was looking at the reference, um, I could see that there's not a lot of movement in in the head actually in the head area. It's it's quite yeah. it's it's quite inarticulate actually. Yeah, so. I think they do that kind of weird thing where they're basically a stick with a little pin on the end, and the pin can rotate. I mean, the head just sort of rotates and looks right at you and actually something that's very interesting about their eyes is that you know normally you're used to those segmented insect eyes um not having pupils but a mantis's eyes kind of do in a weird sort of way they've got little black dots that. which which kind of shift around yeah. and i've got I, I don't know what the science of that is no neither do i it, it, it was quite a fascinating well I, again when i had the reference in front of me i was like well what is that is it a yeah. pupil is it a it, it, it looks very very bizarre it, yeah, it, does, it does look does. exactly like a pupil uh, from a distance but i don't know whether that is actually how they see or i don't know it's very strange um yeah it's it would something cool though. It I gives them a kind of character it gives them more character yeah yeah definitely i mean it was something i was considering of you know putting in but i was like well i didn't really understand what it was and without yeah. that understanding it's kind of i didn't really want to i feel like that's one of those mark. things that you really want to leave to the painter because you can you exactly. can create yeah. so much um atmosphere by making it look in a different direction you know and to, so to have that sort of thing dictated by the sculpt is is not always what you want if you can if you can paint it in and change it around you know especially if somebody uses the model as somebody inevitably will might be me um uh, <laughs> uses it as a uh, as a piece for a diorama yes yeah and this yeah. would be a very easy model to convert because you've got all of those segmented parts. So, so chopping it up and and then re-sculpting the uh, the joins so that they look nice would actually not not be not be a terrible job compared right. to more organic. I know it's organic, but you know compared to an arm with with cloth on it or something where where yeah. you know your your sculpting has to be really really precise. Yeah. Yes. Um... Yeah, it, it's good to, and that's the other thing that I've kind of been trying to learn is, is um, I can do a lot of stuff in in the skull, but it might, it's not I, a lot of the time that's not desirable because you know you want to give painters a lot of a bit more freedom about how they you know how they interpret the model, and um, it, that's part of the fun of painting. I, I, I'm I will admit I'm not a painter, but um, I used to be, and I can understand you know you want to get. It, it's it's got to be an enjoyable experience to to paint a model, and so um, I try and kind of I'm trying at the moment to kind of have a bit more comprehension and understanding of how that works for for painters and how they approach stuff. Because if I can understand that, then I will be able to kind of sculpt much better models for them, and um, yeah, and we can all have fun in the process. <laughs> That's the <Indeed>. idea. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm nearly done with this actually, uh, I, but I just want to, I'm just going to go back in and just sort of get get rid of some of these hard edges a little bit because I think some of them are a bit too hard and I want them to come off a little bit softer. Um, but but the main I, I mean the main pieces that I've focused on are a lot sharper now as you can see they're deeper. Yeah. 
um, and they should kind of come out quite nicely. When I guess ready. you need to be careful that the the angles aren't too acute for because yeah. they're, uh, if they're too acute, then they won't cast well. Exactly, and uh, well, yeah, and the other thing is you don't want it to look too too angular. You don't want it to look like uh, it, it wouldn't. I don't think it it looks. I don't think it looks nice. I see a lot of miniatures like that that are too that have been. You know, are too angularly sculpted. There's too many. Yeah. Too many they're too sharp, and it, 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 they I almost look like they've boring. been sculpted with code rather than sculpted by somebody's hands. Exactly, and they, I, you know, what? I kind of don't think there's any excuse for that anymore these days. So you've got um, a wonderful app in 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 in, in ZBrush where you can you can. I I, I don't want to offend any any traditional sculptors out there, but you can. You know, you can, it's very intuitive. You can sculpt. Um, it does feel like very. It's a very creative sort of process now. Well, I, I've used it, and I'm I'm not I'm not a particularly good um, uh, sculptor. I'm definitely in the sort of extremely <laughs> amateur thing. Uh, but I mean, I'm used to using green stuff, and you know, mostly con for conversions and stuff like that. But you know, I can I can sculpt a little bit, but not yeah. much. But <laughs> using uh, uh, ZBrush, I can. I could instantly see, you know, I with, within a couple of hours of playing around with the program, I could, I, I had something that looked kind of okay, you know, yeah. not not great, but significantly yeah. more impressive than than a ball of clay looked after I'd played with it for an hour for the first time. Um, yeah, you don't so want I to see it, my efforts with a ball of clay. <laughs> they're terrible. Yeah, but I, I feel, I feel like the the. The ability to rewind and to iterate and to make a stroke and not like it and then you know uh, control Z and then make the stroke again uh, kind of, it does a lot of the heavy lifting for you doesn't it yes definitely um, so another little trick I learned um, making toys actually funny enough um, a, a couple of years ago um, is to switch um, materials mat caps yeah materials yeah because well, as you can see already, it looks a lot different, the model. And yeah. when you're making surfaces, um, when you're trying to make smooth surfaces sculpting-wise and you're not retopologizing re them and taking them into more formal applications like Maya or 3ds Max where you can do proper surfaces, um, which you can do in, in ZBrush, of course, now, um, but, but it's a bit more difficult when you're doing organic surfaces. Yeah. Um, so, f for example, you've got this lovely flat area that I'm trying to get on this Mantis, and, and it's it, it's difficult not to have OCD with these things. Yeah. Um, but but one of the things I learned is to use this red red material because it kind of shows you where the surface is a bit funky sometimes. Yeah. Because and, and, the um, the way it, that it, it ref yeah. the light reflects off it is very different to the previous material because they've all got different refractive properties and things like that, don't they? Yeah, I mean, for instance, you, you, well, what this, I mean, especially the red, it, it's got this kind of grey um, effect that goes in the creases of, yeah. of the model. It looks so, like oxidisation, actually. Yes, exactly. Yeah, it's kind of like a patina sort of effect, yeah. isn't it? And um, but but it kind of shows kind of where. I mean, even this bit here, you can see where it's a little bit buckly. I'm going to leave that yeah. because it's just not. It's not going to reproduce in the print, really. It's, yeah, it's it's not worth it. But but if I was doing this at a larger scale. I would go back in and re-sculpt this, smooth it out maybe yeah. a little bit, and 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 it's just a very good way of of um, of, of checking, you know, just checking your progress and, and seeing how everything looks from a different yeah. perspective. I suppose the the equivalent is where um, painters and drawers they'll use a mirror to, to or a Photoshop to mirror their work and then work on it and then mirror it over again. It's kind of the same sort of thing uh, for me in that you know you just check it. It's just checking, uh, making sure that it, it kind of um, it, it, it's still working. <laughs> um, I have had times when I've sculpted quite a lot and then switched material and realised I've made quite a lot of errors. Um, yeah. So it's it's uh, it's important thing to do. Um, but I'm going to switch back to these these other materials. Uh, materials by um, Andre Cristea, by the way, just uh, just in case anyone is, wants to know. 
Um, I've, I've, I use these materials all the time. They are awesome. They are great for presentation and they're great to sculpt with. Um, everyone hates the red material, by the way. They're, yeah. They're, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, um, I, I probably, there's probably, if any sculptors are watching or do watch this, they're probably thinking red, Matt cat, red, yuck. Um, but, but it's a very useful, I find it a very useful kind of material. So, um, shall we, I, I don't know what you think, but shall we do some mandibles? I've kind of left it off because I'd, I'd like that. Yeah. I, I think, I, I, I think it needs a little all, recess. He almost looks like he's got a beak. Um, but I think they, they kind of have a, a sheath over their mouth parts, but they've got kind of like, um, almost ant like, um, pincers. Yeah, so I kind of, let's do this on the fly. I thought this would be fun to do on the fly, which is why I left it. Um, and what we'll do is we'll do it on one side and then we'll mirror it over to the other side because we've kept everything symmetrical. It should yeah. Apply. So I kind of left a little kind of gap there. I mean, we can go back and sculpt it in um, and then um, have a little play, play around with it. So... Uh, we can't obviously have a gap here, so we're going to have to be very careful. But I think what we'll do is we'll use this as a concept, and then if it's if if it works, then um, I'll go back and and make it work for the print. Yep. Um, but I just wanted to see what it looks like because um, at the moment, of course, it looks like he's got a mic. <laughs> <Is Yeah>. it, <laughs> uh, it's like he's doing some land gaming or something. Or um, so I'll just uh, and then there'll, there could be another part to the pin to the pincer, but. I'm not sure if I'm completely understanding how this is going to work. So it's kind of like that, isn't it? But it's going to be sharp. Yeah. Sharp, and I, I think I don't know if it'll, it, it'll. Well, it won't show up unless you really exaggerate it. But I'm quite happy to have some like big chunky serrations in there as well. Yeah. What, yeah Almost what we, like miniature yeah. versions of his forearms. So, like, what on the outside or on the inside? Oh, we could do that on the inside, couldn't we? Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's what I. That's what I mean. The the serrations yeah. on the inside. Let's um, let's just sculpt this in first and see if we can um, get finesse it into something that looks a bit more impressive. So the same as last week, you you start with the big volumes and get the sh the overall shape right, and then move down to the finer detail. That's right. And actually, thinking about it, we'll just make this very similar to one of these legs. Um, yeah, we'll just mirror it, but it's kind of like a microcosm of the design of the legs, really. Yeah, yeah, I like that, and then it gives it some sort of visual uh, 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 continuity as well. Yeah, let's make it a little bit thicker. I just want to make it look, look really impressive. Um, yeah, but without sort of spoiling it. So I'm just going to hide this bit, and then we'll go back to it. Um, let me just find out. Because the, the the thing that I find quite interesting about mantises is you've got this idea of them as being this really kind of um, predatory, savage, you know, sort of aggressive thing. When you actually watch, because I'm, I'm afraid to say that I've been watching mantis porn, uh, <laughs> you know, while... <laughs> oh, that's what you emailed me yeah, the other day. I was getting, yeah, I was starting to get a bit worried about you. <laughs> there's a surprising <laughs> amount of, of the mantis videos that you find on YouTube are mantises having sex and then the, the, the lady mantis... Oh, really? Uh, chopping off the male mantis's head. Uh, oh, I can see why that's popular, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> really, <laughs> really dodgy. Uh, but it, what it is is it is great for seeing how they move and how they articulate and and that sort of thing. Yes. Um, and the th when you actually see them attack, you you know they've got this amazingly cool shape. Yeah. But the actual attack itself is not all that impressive because they are still just insects that weigh a fraction of a gram you know um yeah. so although at scale they've got an awful lot of power uh, as far as we're concerned it doesn't you know you expect them to literally slice something in half um, yeah but actually they just sort of they flick out really fast and and then just sort of you know uh grope at it a bit till they draw it in Yes, it does look. They, they, it almost looks awkward, doesn't it? That, that yeah. those those yeah. kind of they do look not quite vicious, but um, they, they, <laughs> they they you can imagine when you if, when I was sort of thinking it through, I was like, how can I make this look vicious? And and in the end, it looks like they're kind of patting something on the on the on the head or something. With yeah. So I, again, for everyone who's watching, we said that before. Um, 
before we came uh, on air, didn't we? You know, last week we were experimenting with having the um, uh, having the forearm sort of lashing out. Um, yeah. Because, you know, they, they, they really, they've got those arms which are really look like they're just about to sort of, uh, you know, dart out and slice something in half. But actually, when you see the extension, it just looks like they're reaching. It doesn't look all that impressive. And I think that's probably because what's impressive about it is the speed. Yes. Um, yeah. You know, and and so uh, I, actually, I actually prefer uh, him or her in ready to go pose you know so we got that tension going there and you know when we start to repose the um uh, uh, uh repose the the mantis i think that's that's the way to go um but i definitely like the idea of having these big chunky mandibles even if they're not uh scientifically accurate definitely it was just good, such a good fun concept um so i've made it a little bit bigger um and as you say chunkier and Sorry, it's a bit too small on the screen there. And and I think we could probably get that to work if a push came to shove. Um, of course, you've got this big gap here, so we'd have to find a way of filling it. And yeah. um, but I'm not really thinking about that at the moment. I just want to make it look like he's got proper and get rid of this kind of beaky effect. Yeah. It, there is yeah. a beak there at the moment, which is, I don't know, it's not quite working. Um, on its own um so what we can do on the inside of this we will probably add some nice spiky bits uh, i think which which i think will look nice uh um well not nice but pretty nasty um which is what we're going for um so let me just uh, make this a bit bigger and again this we're just designing this it's not really this won't i imagine it won't be like this in the final miniature we'll have to get it to work but um, yeah. it's good yeah. to kind of see i mean again this is what the best thing about digital really is that we can do this and i'm not i don't it's not a real pain for me to re-sculpt it or get it get for me to get it to work yeah i'm just gonna finish this carapace piece off so kind of um in fact what i'm gonna do is remesh that because if you look here you can see where the original shape was and you've got all this kind of bad geometry here so yeah if i'm trying to sculpt on that it's pretty hard not gonna work yeah so I need to um, I need to remesh that, which is quite easy with ZBrush. So um, yeah, it's even more actually. It's quite a small part, so I need to fiddle with the resolution until I get it kind of just where I want it. Um, so now I can kind of it's a lot. It'll be a lot easier for me to sculpt this. I'm just going to do something like that. as it's kind of designed to it that I was able to do with the legs. And then kind of make it in the middle. I don't want to spend too long on this because it's like a, it's not the most it's, it's quite a tiny part but i kind of want it to be a bit similar to the legs yeah, i'm happy with that and then yeah i'm just gonna add some fleshy bits so i'm just gonna overlap And then inflate in between. That sort of kind of create this nice G area. I can go into again and just cut and cut a little bit deeper. So that's something you can do on the computer that you really, it's much more difficult to do. Um, with traditional sculpting and that's that's uh, sculpt additively yes yes i i can i yeah, i can imagine that would be well it's it, almost impossible for a you know for a traditional i'm sure there's ways of doing it but um well the i think the, the worst part of it is you you you've got to judge exactly how much you need 
to add so for example you know you're sculpting a a, a torso and you think the left bicep isn't is is a bit small so you're going to beef it up a little bit and you, so you've got to add some clay you've got to add it all in the right place you have got to make sure you add the right amount judge it yeah. is it right yeah. etc uh, and then you've kind of put it in the wrong place so you have to push it around and make sure it looks right and it, you know it's a pain um which is i mean it's just no problem at all to do it with with um with digital it's really it's really quite straightforward so yeah. what i've done is i've kind of nicked nicked one of the uh teeth off the off the off the forearms and i'm just going to kind of duplicate them along this surface here now there are better ways to do it than this but i'm going to do it the manual way this is the quick way it's a quick and dirty way, but right. sometimes with miniatures, that's all you need because there's not a level of detail on there that, that's that's really that's required. Um, yeah. You can get away with with being a little bit more. I would not say slapdash, but because um, that's the wrong way. <laughs> that's the wrong thing to say to a client. But <laughs> um, it, you can you can afford to. You've got a bit more leeway uh, yeah. creatively with stuff. So I'm fine with slapdash, to be honest. Oh, you're right. Okay. Well, you're a painter. I don't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> don't say that to John, though. <laughs> no. no, I like John. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, actually, they're a bit. Uh, I want them angled. They're a bit angled upwards, aren't they? So I'm just going to merge all those down. Um, so I've got them in one piece, and now I can draw a line across them and rotate them, and then move them down. So I kind of think that's that's quite a vicious looking mandible, don't you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. It's like, I'm not sure how we're going to get that to work on the miniature, but uh, let's let's worry about that later. I'm, I yeah, but I think the the visuals we know we're along the right track. So somebody actually said earlier on uh, in the chat, you know, isn't that going to be too small uh, 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 before you'd got it to the tooth stage? Anyway, you know, wouldn't it be too small to cast, or will they be separate pieces? And you know, the, uh, I think the I, I think I know the answer to that. And the answer is that you know you would you wouldn't want them to be separate pieces necessarily. But what you're going to end up doing is is adding material and f filling gaps and what have you in uh, in order that you've got the same look but that you've filled all the voids and so that there aren't fragile parts so that it will cast properly yeah exactly i think what will there, there's there's all sorts of options i think what what i tend to do is not worry about that if you worry about that unless you the the, un, the only thing the only thing that would change my attitude to that is if i was doing a one piece mini now, if you're doing one piece miniatures, then you really do have to think about that stuff because yep. in, before you start sculpting, because um, you've got no leeway at all. Um, yeah. you, you know, you have to be very careful about how you go about things. Um, but but for multi part, more boutique, shall we say, style miniatures, um, I. I tend not. I tend to forget about it until I until I need to think about it, um, which is the very end of the sculpt normally. Of course, that doesn't stop me from doing. You know, I I won't do really ridiculously small stuff because I know it just won't work. But neither will I stop myself from doing things that 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 are going to be difficult to do uh, if I did not if I left them as they were. Um, because uh, I, I, I think the idea of boutique miniatures is that they're, they're kind of uh, pushing the light, pushing the mark a bit, you know, pushing design a bit. You know, they're, 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 they're designed to be like that, to be enjoyed as pieces, yeah. as opposed to kind of um, knocked about and as, as war, war game pieces, I suppose. Um, so I kind of... I kind of think about, try not to think about it and then think about it nearer the end of the sculpt. So in this context, really with the mandibles, we will just literally have, find some way of joining these the, these mandibles to the mouthpiece um, so that it's all one part. Um, it, just just little things like that that you can actually hide stuff. Um, you can, you, you will be able to hide it somehow. Yeah. Um, and not impact the design massively. No, because we're talking about such a small area. I have a suspicion that if you added that other mandible and then actually joined them up underneath the the beak yeah. of the head, you wouldn't notice at all. Uh, Definitely, as normal, James. We're, all, we're on exactly the same wavelength. Um, we are telepathetic, as they say. Um, <laughs> well pathetic anyway <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so that there you go 
actually that looks pretty awesome anyway i think uh, uh i mean of course if yeah. i do say so myself yeah idea. i agree um, he's he's looking a lot scarier <laughs> or she yes so um, i think I it's mean, definitely it's a, yeah I, yeah yeah i i kind of if i kind of merge that down and then stick it into symmetry i can actually move those together move them outwards move them in uh, there's all sorts of stuff we can do with that anyway. Let's leave them as they are, and um, that's something we can think talk about when we come to optimization and printing. Uh, and even if it, you know, we'll go back to it. I do think it's added much more to that to that area of the of the of the head. Yeah, um, I agree. Yeah, it, it's it's um uh, that works a lot better for me now. It looked it looked like he, he was too happy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. it looked like it was a bit chirpy so um it's nice to have that kind of fierceness back into it um so let's leave the face there then i think i'm quite happy with where that's gone and uh, as long as you are mate um, yeah absolutely absolutely excellent. so let's finish this bit off down at the bottom so let's have a look at the bottom of the skull first um so i mean when i when i when i looked at kind of the design sort of uh concepts in in my that i had in my head uh and then looking at sort of uh, things with armor and you know that in the natural world and they normally have the kind of this element of armor and then the soft sort of underbelly or or kind of musculature uh underneath the armor so i've kind of tried to kind of add that into the sculpt yeah um so on, on underneath and i couldn't didn't, i mean I, I kind of looked at the reference but after a while i just ignored it and kind of mi tried to mirror the kind of the underneath design a little bit and then just went to town a bit more um just just to be a bit more creative and add some more interest to the to the actual sculpts so um I've actually I've done most of the other bits of leg, but I haven't. As you can see, this this bit here is a little bit blocky because um, it's not finished. Um, and actually, I think there's this. Oh, I need to delete that because it's in the way. So yeah, there you go. So I'm going to isolate this. And um, actually, as you can see here, it's uh, this these these are all different separate pieces. Um, so that I can uh, we can move them about nearer the end, and we can start posing. The, the sculpt a little bit easier so they're not all one joined in one piece um, yeah, we, yeah we can move them about quite safely and uh, they won't impact the other pieces and we don't need to use complex masking to, to pose um, but I kind of need to think about where this um, leg joins you know where, where they all join and how they all join yeah um, uh, because of course if I, I don't want to be sculpting there and find out that that leg actually covers it <laughs> um uh, the fact is i probably will it probably will end up doing something like that but um as long as i've got that in the back of my head that parts of that at the end of this are going to be covered um i don't think it matters too much um i just won't waste my time yeah and i um, guess uh do you, do you find yourself switching when you're working on a particular element and and you need to be you need to be mindful about where it joins the other parts so you can just switch those other parts back on for a minute and have a look and then yeah. switch them back off again and carry on going yeah i mean in this in this context it's it's like it's difficult because of course you've got the rest of the sculpt in the way um now i can spend a bit of time kind of hiding the rest of this sculpt and then just using it but i i, I kind of I think just having using the solo mode and then switching it back off every now and then um, is 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 fine. Um, it doesn't seem to be too much of a problem. I'm just going to up the resolution again on this ever so slightly. It's, well, it's actually way below resolution. It's better. Great. So I'm just going to go back and sculpt this now. Make sure it's nice and big on my screen. See it. So I'm just going to go and smooth. I'm smoothing everything out a little bit at the moment. So, so is that because you're you're smoothing the lines that used to be there because it was it was a lower resolution before? So it yeah. was blockier, and yeah. you raise the resolution, but that doesn't remove the blockiness. You have to blur it out. Yeah, um, because when I um, this was a very low resolution piece that I had um, before, and then when I redynameshed it, I actually went quite high on the resolution. And what what Dynamesh will do is try and retain the detail. Well, if there's no if if the object's not detailed enough, it actually retains the kind of um, 
uh, the mosaic like features of the, of the polygon model that was there before yeah so you kind of have to go through and and, and blur that now I wanted this fairly high resolution because um, I'm going to uh, add a bit more definition to it yeah so I had to add I you kind of have to play I mean there is a, there is actually a plugin that you can choose specific uh, resolutions for but I actually don't even know how how tight this should be so I'm just playing around with the resolution slider here to get what I want really um, and then I know I've got the rough shape and that's all that matters really with this yeah um, and then once I've got that I can actually then hone in and and, and actually get some some better looking uh, definition on it so it's very similar to what I did with the um, with the face um, just just to add although I've got some some idea of kind of what this is going to look like and just sharpening up those corners and it is quite a fun part of the sculpt actually um just to kind of create these shapes and details and and um just have fun really there's a lot of uh very sort of uh you know nice looking curves but actually it's quite a complicated shape the object yeah, it, I, um, I think that the other thing is that's part of the way I sculpt as well. I do sculpt with lots of uh, lines and plan off forms, and, and it's just the way I've kind of um, taught myself how to sculpt, really. Um, I, I kind of enjoy that. I kind of enjoy uh, when I'm sculpting, sort of finding these forms in things that aren't yeah. actually there. Um, it's one of the things I really like to do. Um, and and so for you know a, a model like this is ideal for that sort of thing because you can literally just go to town on finding these kind of amazing shapes here and uh, and kind of um, making them look like they belong but also having fun and expressing them and um, yeah just exploring them really um, so this is I mean really I'm spending a lot of time on this it's a little bit of a hidden feature of the model but I kind of want it to look very similar to the um, the rest yeah so that it doesn't because I always find especially with these sort of big larger models attention to detail is everything yeah um, because people tend to um, tend to notice more um, that, that they're looking and they're searching more so I kind of it's quite important to kind of to um, to have that detail on there and uh, spend the time doing it because it does it pays dividends um, yeah everything starts to tie together when you've uh... yeah exactly so you can see here look it's clipping over the other the other leg I, I don't really have a problem with that at the moment and I think we will be merging all of this anyway so what I will do is um, when we come back to merge all this leg together I will go back and re-sculpt that so that um, one you know so that it either it looks like there's tendons that join the other leg there or yeah. you know it, it, it works anatomically it ties it together yeah, yeah. Other, yeah. otherwise it does look it looks well, a bit funny it looks like they are separate pieces that have been stuck together because that's exactly what they are Exactly. Yes, and you can see it here in the rest of the sculpt. You know, we've yeah. got this bit that's clipping over here, and yeah. I, mean, I can move that out. But then, and then, when that's probably what I'll end up doing, and then add a bit of an extra bit of clay in there that looks like tendons. Um, but at the moment, it's just I just want to get the shape because what will happen is I, we will pose this, and so these legs will be more bent than others. And and so if I just um, if I do it now, then it, we're going to have to resculpt it. Yeah, again. you're wasting your you're wasting your yeah. work basically. And it's the same with humans. I, I find, you know, that I, I don't, I tend to sculpt if they're not hidden. Um, the joints are the last thing I sculpt uh, when I when I'm when I'm doing humans in that way because um, I will search and find the uh, the pose first and then fill in the joints after. Yeah. Um, and so it's a similar concept to um, to, to what I'm doing here in that in that respect. Um, so I'm just going to go back to this, and I think I want to pull out another form actually. Um, yeah. What's nice about this bit is it's not symmetrical at all, uh, whereas the other stuff was. I was able to take the legs. Um, so if you were to look at the front, this one here from the front, it's completely symmetrical. Yeah. Um, where I was able to isolate it and then take it into 
make it a separate part and then add symmetry to it and sometimes it's desirable because you're doing a I wanted this to look a little bit more uniform as it's as it's like an armored bit um and uh, and and have a, have a bit more kind of pleasing shape to it which you get from symmetry sometimes um and then what we can do later is we can add some dents and and a little bit more maybe feature to this not too much because it's 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 not a, a big part but um, so make it look individual and separate from the other leg, which I've mirrored over as well, and it's identical. Um, so we, we'll, we'll, we can revisit that as well. Um, but I can, sorry, I'll continue on sculpting this, and I think I'm kind of done here. I don't know if you noticed that you lost me. Oh no, no. Good. <laughs> so my connection is a bit dodgy. Luckily, yours seems to be uh, top well, notch. I'm quite happy sculpting away actually, so it's no problem at all. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so then yeah, you're now putting in those uh, those lines which echo the detailing on the carapace of the rest of the sculpt. Yeah, yeah, and it's just uh, yeah, that's it's kind of um, kind of wanted to yeah to mirror all of these sort of features in the rest of the sculpt so that it kind of ties together. Um, so it's kind of got this armored look but it's a little bit more organic if that yeah. makes sense it makes um, perfect sense yeah um i'm using i'm doing all this freehand i mean i mean but i've got a, i don't know if you can see but i've got lazy radius on at six which basically lets you i mean if i turn it all the way up you'll see it drags a line out you see that yeah i see i and see that helps me control the stroke a little bit yeah more. yeah I wish I had a pencil I, like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's very very handy. Um, I, I, it's great for for drawing details. Um, but I, I kind of I, I like to have it on fairly low setting, but but on, on if I, you know um, if you get me. So yeah. that it, it, I, it's a little. I find the strokes are a little bit more easy to control. But as you see, some of my strokes are a little bit wonky. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it matters at this scale. It's not it's not the end of the world. Um, so. And as you can see, that's going to clip over. But I kind of I want that design there and that sculpt there because if I move this leg down, if I ever have to move this leg down, you know, the, the sculpt's still going to be it's still going to be there. So we can join it there. And and but but I can always fill that back in if I if I have to. Yeah. Um, but then I just need to do the underside, which is that kind of fleshy, muscular sort of side. Um, I'm just going to prune this down a bit. Add these. And, oops, need to drop my pen there. Very similar to what how I did the mandible actually. Um, so I'm just kind of adding this contrasting folds into it, and it kind of looks a little bit fleshy. Yeah. And then do you inflate it a little bit afterwards, or are you just? Yeah, I did. I, I might, I might not do that. Let's let's see what it looks like. Um, again, this is the underside, so I kind of, I want it to look a little bit like this, but but not. But I want it to look a little bit fleshy. So I'm just going to give myself a bit more resolution and just kind of add these forms in there, and then I might just inflate the edges ever so slightly. For the mandibles, I kind of thought inflating would work well because um, it, it was a smaller object, so I kind of wanted to make it look, at, you know, um, accentuate a little bit. Yeah. Um, but I think that looks pretty cool as well, actually. Um, I wanted this bit to look especially fleshy, but um, also I want to create these kind of forms as well. That's kind of on the rest of the sculpt. So it's kind of like... Um, like the back the front with the carapace is this is kind of uniform and then this is a little bit more fleshy and chaotic yeah 
but it's just having fun i'm literally just having fun with it i'm not there's no i'm not going off any design or any sort of um recipe or anything it's literally just creating from my head um and i think from a distance so that's pretty cool sorry that's pretty cool um, yeah. i'm quite happy with that it's, it's a very minor part but we just need it to look good for now yeah and then yeah we can go back and add some joints here or, or um, whatever we need to do move it we probably have to move it about to, to get it to work but what i'm going to do now is just mirror that over to the other side so this is the best thing the other thing about um and that hasn't worked <laughs> every now and then it doesn't work um because of the name so i probably got the wrong name on it um but yeah the best thing about digital is mit is the symmetry and 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 well and the worst thing as well um is is kind of being able to mirror stuff and and duplicate and uh, all of that i'm just going to rename this um and, and that will solve hopefully my problem with mirroring yes there you go um it's just something to do with a script if you if it's got if it's got a weird name or the a duplicate name it, it won't mirror across so um we've solved that problem um and now so now we've got all four legs awesome uh, awesome and it okay, does look good. it does look pretty cool yeah. i think um so i'm just going to finish this bottom side up because you can see it's a little bit blocky here yeah um so and you can see where i've just added this kind of area here so i'm just going to finish it up and uh get it nice for you um so you can see i've got a fair amount of polygons on here um i'm also going to try and do these wings so for you so at some point so hopefully we'll have time I, i'm not t keeping track of time so hopefully we're doing okay we are yeah we've we, we've been just over an hour right great i think we i think did we did two hours just under two hours last time we did. it was like a marathon last time yeah, wasn't it yeah that. so you can see all this area is a little bit funky where i've yeah well i guess the thing about last time was that you know we felt the need to kind of explain the workflow and the methodology of, of the way you know and a fair bit about the way that the program works you know whereas uh, now i you know hopefully people most people have seen the first part um and so have some of that knowledge under their belt as they look at your work yeah, yeah. I think, um, of course, there's a lot of very complicated sort of principles behind all this. So it's it's difficult to know when to stop showing people, you know, because it I guess it can be quite boring. Um, but but hopefully, yeah, um, at least we've given people enough of like an introduction. Yeah. To to kind of you know how I would go like about stuff and and um, if this is exactly anyway the, what I'm doing now is exactly what I did for the rest of the the firm sculpts and the militia sculpts I made for you really there's no you know um, the only difference here is that of course I've got no concept so we're kind of making this up as we go along whereas um, do you how do you uh, do you find you prefer that or you'd rather you'd rather have really strict instruction I, I'm flexible. I, honestly, I'm flexible. Sometimes I know it, some artists are very. They they really want very yeah. very strict reference work to work from, and they don't they don't like being given the freedom. Well, funny enough, I mean, I I've got work recently where I'm working as a concept sculptor. So where they you don't have a, a piece of art, and well, you do have a a tiny bit of two D art, but they want you know want to explore the character. And yeah. That was, that's great fun. It's yeah. really good fun. But the other thing is you've got to be prepared for people not to like it. Yeah. Um, whereas if you, and it, uh, you know, it is a thing as an artist, you kind of want everything that you do to people to love. And, of course, um, yeah, yeah. Doing a concept, it, it, you know, that part of the job of that concept is to search out that idea and um and and a lot of the time it won't be received well or you know it will be changed or it, it's in a constant state of flux so well it, the, i mean the reason why i was very happy to work without uh, a concept on this one is is well for a start because you already sculpted canada and and secondly uh we've worked together quite a lot now um, yeah, yeah. and i think we we now both understand each other pretty well uh, yeah. you know, uh, whereas yeah so i i feel 
very confident about giving you that freedom and 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 just saying you know do do what you think is cool um and you know it's nice to have a little bit of an intervention here and there and to talk about it and to discuss yeah. where it's going yeah. but uh you know where whereas with someone else i might really not be happy with what they've done which is then a pain in the neck for them as well yeah um, yeah i think it, i think um being on the same wavelength as a client, communicating, um, making sure you understand the brief, all of this stuff is 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 like fifty percent of what what you know what what I what I and other sculptors have to do. It's really important. It's like um, and it's not something that they teach you at art school. It's not, yeah. yeah, I didn't learn that at art school. In fact, I learned the opposite. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least that's how they taught you know they taught me the opposite. You know, um, it, it, it it's something that you kind of you know you if if you if you can do that if you've got those skills if you can take critique if you can talk to people about their brief and understand what they want and their needs and communicate throughout the work you will always get what you they will you and and they're happy with your work you will always get work from them but there's there's always the the um how to put it well no i don't need to be polite because we're talking about a hypothetical person but the nightmare client that doesn't actually know what they want well, that's I've had that recently as well. I'm afraid, and 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 in a, in the nicest way possible. But it's it's yes, and 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 it, it can be a real problem. And actually, if a new client approaches me now without concepts uh, for for their miniature, I will probably I would likely tell them to go away and get the concept done. Yeah, because it saves so much so much aggro. Um, unless they're going unless they're going to um, employ me as a concept sculptor and the two things are very different yeah. um so it, 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 it's really something i'm only just learning about um but but yeah i um mostly though for the miniatures business people if uh, especially if they have a strong idea in their head but they haven't communicated it to a concept artist um i i would be i would be very worried about that and be like well if the, if you haven't bothered to do it with a 2d artist what you know what are you trying to cut corners and yeah it, yeah all, all those alarm bells would start ringing and it's just i tried to do it before with with a new client um without concept art and it just didn't work yeah it, 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 and people don't in, people need to have um need need to have in front of them what they're going to get or at least at some sort of semblance if it, and if they don't know you then then how can they kind of know what they're going to get and now that is what the 2d concept art does because it's a it's a middle point it's like this is what i want and it's on paper and it's visual i can follow that um so it that's why it's so important um and then i can if, there, if there's any problems then you can go back to the 2d concept art and say well no it's not quite like this um so yeah i think it's that's that's for me that's really really important um to have that that communication before i start yeah and but, i but, from my point yeah. of view i really like having another intervention in the creative process so i explain what i want to the concept artist and he does not always do what i want and and the thing is because of his style he's not he's not really in a position to iterate i you know it, yeah. if i say move the arm up he has to draw the entire thing again because of the way he works yeah. and so he isn't the ideal concept artist but i i very i i very specifically chose somebody who made pieces of art not concept work yeah. you know because I, yeah. I wanted them to be very visually interesting i want to use them in the game i want to use them in the on the cards and have them featured in the rule book and that sort of stuff it was it was an important part of it to me so for me then to have another intervention when you know i mean uh, i come to you and say okay so this is the concept art and this is what works and this is what doesn't work and yeah. here are some photographs of some things that i wanted it to look like but it came back like that um, yeah um i think and and the, of course the other thing is that i know you now i know what you want i know well I, to a point i know what you want we can sit and chat about stuff and then and so in this context i you know i'm quite happy to do this kind of searching concept style sculpt for you because i know that we we've got we've got we, it's very clear in our heads what we want 
and um, and there is going to be a bit, a bit of give and take, a bit of leeway, a bit of you know backwards and forwards. But I know that that's going to be taken in in, in you know in good heart. And and uh, but I, I for a new ca a client, I just don't know that that's the case. And so it is very difficult unless. The actual job is like a like a, a concept sculpt in that they don't the client has no idea what they want either, yeah. And, uh, and it's a searching kind of process to find what they want. And normally that that is a lot more expensive, of course, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. because there's a lot more work involved. Um, uh, but it's different, and it's difficult to do with miniatures as well because at the end of the day, you need to do a miniature that actually works, um, that, that that's going to work as a as a printed cast piece of art. So um, it's doubly complicated when you don't have a concept um, because um, you, you don't have the amount of freedom that you would have normally. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think probably the largest difference between our concept art and sculpt have been the poses more than anything else. You know, there are certain poses yeah. which work in two dimensions but don't work in three dimensions, for example. You know, the 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 anatomy isn't doesn't work the way because you have to think about it in three dimensions, obviously, you know, you have to think about the muscles that you can't see in the back, for example. Yes. Um yeah, I, I think what what I'm what what I feel I've been able to add to, 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 to a lot of my miniature work is a little bit more dynamism to the how stuff is you know I've been able to pose stuff and I think that's mainly because of the 3d format you know you can play around a lot more with posing and um, play around with the dynamism of, of, yeah. of a little bit more but you, but you also have to understand artist, it. it's difficult for, for, for a 2d artist to have that awareness of three uh, ultimate awareness of 3d spaces and I mean, uh, two of the artists are amazing. I'm always like uh, absolutely in awe of what they can do. But um, no matter what they do, they just literally can't turn something in 3D space like I can. You know, yeah. that's that's the that's the bottom line, I guess. Um, and also, of course, it being a digital medium, I, I can actually afford to, you know, push it around the screen a bit until I can get it right. Um, so, so you kind of, basically yeah. have to interpret, really. Yeah, definitely. Um, you look at the the spirit of the thing, and then try and recreate yeah. it in three D. Yeah. Doing, taking the spirit rather than copying the detail. Well, I think the pose, the muscle tension, etc. Um, there's some sculptors that might might just literally interpret what's been put in front of them. Um, the 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 the, um, the the concept literally try and replicate it. But I kind of. I've had more success um, with sculpts when I've done my own thing to a point. Uh, of course, I will always chat with a client through, uh, chat through the client, well, as I did in your case, James. You know, we were yeah. in a good chat about it. I kind of understood where you wanted to go with stuff, um, and uh, I think that that's kind of the, the the middle point, isn't it? It's meeting in the meeting in the middle, uh, um, and having and just having enjoying the process as well that's the really important and also thing. finding people who just who you can work well with and people who yeah. understand your points uh, understand and share your point of view you know i think one, one of the things yeah. that i said to you when we first started talking was that um wandering around the internet you see an awful lot of really generic looking 3d sculpts uh, really yeah. boring, soulless. You know, the pose literally looks like somebody has taken um, an artist's doll and and posed it. You don't, you know, you. It's like somebody, rather than somebody, um, you know, leaping off a building, somebody's standing on one leg, faking the pose of le leaping mm -hmm. off a building. Do you see what I mean? The the muscle yeah. tension isn't right. The yeah. the movement of the pose isn't quite right. And you see an awful lot of that where it just looks like somebody's taken a T pose and just mm -hmm. and just bent it around until it's in the shape they want and think, and called I it a day. Largely, that's exactly what's happened. I'm afraid. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, but look, at the end of the day, I, I'm not. Um, I'm, I, it's, I'm, anatomy is something I'm still learning. I'm, I will never stop learning. It's like it is crazy, I, you know. But but it, I do think um, uh, it's it, it's it's kind of I try and kind of um, think more in terms of 
traditional sculpture. I'm lo I look at much more digital uh, traditional sculpture these days than I do yeah. digital for for, yeah. for for inspiration and think well how did they do that how does how does it work how does how where is them what you know how does the mind think when you're sculpting something traditionally like that um of course i i mean i went to art school i kind of understand the the, the basic principles of of um of, of all the sort of the basic the basic stuff you know um form and uh, composition and all of this and and i did a bit of life drawing so that that kind of really helps um uh, in, in that context I, I i kind of i think um with with sculpture it's literally like practice 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 and the one thing i found is that um there's so many other things to learn with 3d there's so much stuff to learn that it's easy to focus on the wrong things and not the um not the things that you want to get right so for me i focus i'm constantly focusing on anatomy and, and not worrying about texturing or uvs or anything like that um for me it, that uh composition anatomy uh, all all of the those basics i still try and focus on those things i really still i still still place a lot of value on that and but the only problem is that i kind of um it it, it I, I feel like i've been left behind by other stuff so it is a constant juggling process um when you're in this kind of industry to keep up with everything that's going on and um you know fo and and tr you, i guess you could focus too much on something uh, on things but i kind of I, that's my preferred route at the moment um uh, I, I, I have, I'm doing a project now where I'm kind of playing around with UVs and textures, but I'm so bad at it. It's, it's very, <laughs> of course, it's natural, isn't it, to do something you're more comfortable with. Yeah. So, um, yeah. It, so, who's uh, your uh, favourite traditional sculptor? Oh well, or I who mean, do you think's the best? Okay, I mean, for me, Rodan. I mean, Rodan is Rodin, just really awesome. interesting. I mean, the gates of hell. I just, I just awesome. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm much more. I guess I like the traditional stuff a lot more. Um, uh, so I will always look to ride. And I actually, I, you know what? I, I know it's probably an unpopular choice, but I, I honestly, I'm a big fan of Degas and in his paintings, but I've also seen a lot of his sculpts um, and they yeah. are, they're so loose. And that's kind of, I kind of miss that in digital sculpture. And what I was able to do, uh, the, the stuff I did at art school was quite loose. Yeah. And, um, one day I would like to be that loose in digital. Um, a contemporary artist, um, uh, a, an amazing sculptor that that does that, that that's in um, that's in the, the sort of the ZBrush circles, is a guy called Mariano Steiner. He is awesome. He, he just he's got this amazing loose way of sculpting um that i would just love i'd love to get in his head and understand how he works it, it, it there's an element of fearlessness to it which is kind of quite yeah. admirable um uh, i find i would love to have, be brave enough to do that uh one day um so that here's another question we're getting on it we're getting away from miniatures and in, 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 and it, deeply yeah. into art here i don't know how yeah popular that is with other people but to what uh how how well do you separate your personal and your professional work do you make things just for you uh and how do you divide your time um so really i, I at the moment my 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 time is spent solely on professional work yeah um i decided that, in fact i kind of decided to do that this year and just see where it took me um because I, I mean i'm relatively inexper inexperienced you know i, I kind of I, I started sculpting um professionally about a, a year and a half ago so i've not been doing this very long and one thing i really lacked was a good client base and and general knowledge of the industry how much to charge for sculpts and um you know how long i should take and there's no one out there telling you this you know you kind of yeah. have to learn it all and um, I kind of decided, well, I decided the best way to do that was to focus on miniatures because it's a lot more forgiving in uh, in many ways than the kind of um, the uh, one quarter, one six scale sort of stuff you see out there. It's, it's, um, it's I mean, the, 
it's not forgiving in some ways in that you the turnaround for sculpts is a lot is expected to be a lot quicker um but it's more forgiving in terms of you know anatomy and and uh, and and sort of the other stuff um and so i I'm, i i was very good at faces but i was not i just did not was not up on anatomy at all and it was something i had to work on and so i felt that miniatures was a good way to kind of pursue that and, and and get paid for it and and also learn the um the process of how to deal with clients how it, how that all that worked and um you know uh how uh, just i think the biggest the big big thing for me is not learning how long it took me to do stuff um and then charge for it it was a massive thing to learn um and so i've been able to do that and uh, that was for me that was very important um, before I started looking at further afield as such. Um, but I've had a blast doing this this sort of stuff. It's it's such good fun, and um, I've kind of met some amazing people like yourself, James. Um, uh, so it's it's been it's been it's been really good fun. Yeah, I guess it's very, I mean, it's a very different thing to um, study something and to go to art school and to, you know, really, I've, I don't know how, uh, you know, from, from what you said, it seems to me that you, that the, that your focus or the focus of um, what you learned at art school was very much about art, not so much about professional skills. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, can't, I can only speak about my own experience, but my experience with art school was, was mixed. Um, uh, firstly, like, um, I, I, I liked my tutors. I liked my, you know, uh, I was a mature student as well. Um, I suppose that makes a little bit of a difference. Um, but but it, and it was very popular to kind of bash the tutors and bash the course and all of this. But I kind of, I, I liked them. I, I had time for them. They were nice people and they taught me quite a lot in, in their own way. But, but in t in the context of profession being a professional artist i don't think they taught me a lot really <laughs> and maybe that sounds really arrogant i don't know I, I i've always learned much more from experience than someone teaching me yeah that but that's i think maybe that's my character not not necessarily their fault per se but i think the other thing is with modern art schools you are very much left up to your own devices so um there, there is a little bit of self-schooling. Yeah, it's an environment in which you teach yourself, uh, which you are able to teach yourself rather than, you know, a place where they're going to tell you what to do. Yes, exactly. It's, 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 um, well, and, and, and in that way, I guess I was lucky being a mature student because I kind of understood that concept and many people didn't. Um, and, and, and that was a shame really because it kind of affected their, their, their art education it was quite an important concept to get across um and i think the, the that's the thing with art education uh, there were a lot of people there that went straight in from school and they were expected to be to be treated like they were at school yeah and it's kind of it's not like that it's not really that sort of place you know art school it was um so i was kind of more at home there as a as a um pure student uh, in that way um, so I kind of feel a bit lucky and I actually got to know the tutors really well and I ended up teaching there for, or, or doing some sort of uh, teaching assistance there for a while uh, after I graduated which was really really good fun and um, a very it's a, it's, a, it's a lovely experience being able to teach it's a very it's humbling and um, it, it, it's just and it's just it's good fun as well it, it, it really um, it really you, do, you actually learn a lot from teaching um which which was su i found surprising but but very enjoyable um it's just a shame that, uh, that, 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 that the education system in this country is so rubbish and that is that was my main problem with art school it wasn't necessarily the art tutoring or anything like that it was just the way that the um, education in this country is the way it's structured it, it's just not it's um it's not very good it's kind of uh, ex uh, exam and assessment focused rather than learning focused, I guess. So what are you doing with the wing? I saw, I think you were smoothing it out or something. Yeah, I'm kind of getting, I'm trying to get a nice shape. So I, I purposefully yeah. left this other wing here so that I could sculpt it for you uh, on live. And um, 
yeah i kind of uh, i mean i started with a very loose shape and i'm kind of flattening out and smoothing it yeah um so is the other one finished it's yeah to a point i think i think to a point where i'm ready to show you and then get feedback and then see where it goes i mean we might have to inflate it up or, or to bring out those details um, yeah but as a concept i can't i was kind of like i was like yeah that that, that will do for now um it looks very wing like whether or not it's actually whether or not you agree with that Wolf. <laughs> yeah well again i'm not i'm not an expert on mantis wing patterns and no. frankly i don't think i don't think uh, it being entirely anatomic yeah so i'm just gonna up the lazy radius again uh, And more. I'm back. My connection died again. I could tell. I was just, I'm just continuing. Like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I was just saying. I think, I think they definitely the 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 pattern on the wings looks good. Uh, I might like to see just like a little bit of texture somehow. Yeah, we can add that definitely. Um, yeah. We can add a bit of noise to it, maybe. We'll just have a little play with that. Let me just finish this off. And I'm doing all this by hand, and my monitor just went crazy there. So and literally just slipped right out of my hand. So. <laughs> Yeesh. Um, which is all right, because it's on this big sort of uh, pole thing at the moment, hovering over my desk. <laughs> so, it's um, so I can't quite see. Are you engraving or, or, I'm, or, it's or adding it's, there? It's coming, I'm actually adding. I'm using right. um, uh, a brush called Orb Cracks by a guy called um, Michael Vicente. It's, it's, it's just an awesome brush. I use it all the time. It's just it's brilliant because it creates this amazing kind of deep effect. Uh, very different to the Damien standard brush that pinches. It's, it's kind sharper, of, isn't it? It's got a nice sharp effect to it, yeah. So I think we're just going to um, just create these patterns. Um, so it kind of, I mean, we only need to do it on the end of the, the end of the wing because it's the other stuff is not visible. But a bit, a bit of studying of wings. So like this is kind of the process I came up with. Um, and it kind of looked it looked similar enough and i think for this sculpt it's probably that's what we're going for isn't it really um similar enough yeah yeah and, uh, and i kind of quite, i quite like this effect anyway it kind of looks nice and uh the other, the other thing is it I kind of like, it's got quite a clean effect which i kind of like so i think adding a bit of um texture to it afterwards might work really well I'm yeah. quite happy with that stroke actually. Yeah. Um, make sure it's similar. Yeah, I think that's about right. I mean, I think that kind of looks, they look like wings to me, but. but yeah, no, um, I agree. I mean, we can add sort of, we can mask this these areas out and add a little bit more kind of maybe a, a stripey sort of texture or a crinkly sort of texture to it. I mean, like yeah. we can go back. In fact, we could do it now. We can go to noise and just add some noise to it if I can frame. Um, so, I mean, that no noise will just, you just get random noise at the moment. Um, that's probably not desirable. We can kind of play around with the strength and and uh, kind of scale it up. And so we can we we might go back and do that later. Um, yeah. Maybe more of a pattern based noise will be appropriate there. Um, we 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 can have a little play around with that. Um, I don't want to do it at the moment because we, we I would spend all night doing that. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think that's appropriate. But um yeah definitely I kind of I, I think and then of course the other thing that we had last last time in during the um the initial uh session was that you know how did how do these wings work i mean did, is he able to is the beast able to use them and i think we kind of said well maybe they, they are tied down 
and I think when I looked at saddles and especially I've been looking at kind of samurai sort of saddles because like Canada's got this kind of far eastern yojimbo look sort of yeah. uh, thing going on and I kind of wanted to imitate that on the saddle somewhere and maybe in the design um and so I was kind of thinking you know that um yeah, we could have these sort of elements and then this this kind of uh, you know, Japanese saddles, they have this sort of flap out the back, bit of cloth over the back of the horse, um, as do a lot of other sort of uh, warrior kind of riders, I noticed. So it's something cool I saw in the reference, and there's a nice big area to sculpt in there, so we'll probably do mm. some, something cool there, maybe put some um, ammo belts and stuff on there. Yeah. Um, but also we can actually add a clip, uh, add a sort of belt around the middle, and that will actually keep the wings from opening up yeah uh, and chucking him a, sending him flying sending him absolutely flying yeah so <laughs> that's kind of how we we will get around that kind of uh, that, that problem <laughs> um so i'm just gonna we've got a bit left haven't we so i'm i'm just gonna see if i can do this back back end of this uh, of the seat um because I, I, this is the the skull uh, the skull sculpt I did last last session. Yeah, so I'm just going to finish it off a little bit, and um, as you can see, it's a little bit more like a gorilla sculpt, uh, a gorilla skull, gorilla skull now. Yeah, um, I've kind of uh, made the forehead a little bit bigger, um, and uh, add, added this ridge, which is quite, as you said at the time, is very prominent. Yeah, it's really um, far more distinctive than you'd think, and their cranium is actually really tiny compared to the size tiny. of the face. Yeah, so again, I've, there's a little bit of leeway here, so I'm just going to finish it off very quickly. And um, I think the other the other um, important point is getting the teeth right, because they're they're another thing which is really distinctive on a gorilla. Yeah. They've got those uh, sort of big canine teeth, both top and bottom. They kind of jut out in a, a strange angle, um, yeah. and actually they're. Their front teeth, their in, uh, front incisors, are, are quite short. They're sort of short, yeah. short and blunt. Yes. Yeah, so um, yeah, it's just kind of getting that right and yeah, getting finding the where where our our artistic license is and and seeing what we can. I want to make sure that's not too thin because that's going to cause a problem when we go to print it and. Although I like tend to ignore these things, I think it's worth kind of filling that in just in case. Yeah, so that's normally something that you think about at the end. You go over over it with a fine tooth comb and, and yeah. make sure it's castable. But uh, yeah. if something I mean, if occurs to something, you while you're doing it, yeah. Then we'll, yeah. If, if I see something obvious, then I'll I'll try and kind of sort it out on the fly as well. I mean, I, I like I said, I don't actively look for those, but if I come across them. Um, then, then it's, it's normally better to just to sort them out as you go. Yeah. Um, normally, that is kind of normally the sort of things you come across in like that are kind of the are the the th thinness of of the sculpt. You know, some because I could see here, in fact, that's still a little bit too thin where this um, nos um, nose bone is, the nasal bone. It was a little bit too thin there, so that would cause all sorts of problems when you go mm. to print it. Yeah. So, um, they kind of finish this off i'm not going to worry too much about the teeth i might come back to it actually and and, and anyway but i just wanted to get this in a little bit better and yeah, i guess anyway. you, i guess you just want to see how much uh how much space it's going to take up and and how you know then zoom out and see how prominent it is on the sculpt that sort of thing yeah definitely um and again, the other thing is this sculpt is not we're not we're not going for uber accuracy with this sculpt. It's 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 a fun interpretation. So um, we don't want to get too caught up in in stuff um, initially. Anyway, we can go back, but um, I kind of I, I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. If there's no, I mean, if, we, if you had light, uh, if you had shadow, this would all be in shadow anyway. These 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 pits in the skull. So I'm not going to yeah. worry too much. I might just um, focus on the ridge a little bit. That made that dynamic, which is not good. I'm just going to add a bit more intensity to that. Yeah, it's. I think it's almost symmetrical the way that the uh, the nose, uh, the the skull at the nose, and then the skull at the ridge. 
um, they sort of mirror each other. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to leave that there. I, I think I'm definitely going to have to revisit that, um, but with reference and then with reference on the screen and make sure I've got, got it to a point where I'm happy with. But I think the size is about right and... Um, I kind yeah, of. I agree. I, I think it's it, making the right visual impact anyway. Yeah, I think um, I, I had it lower, and then I added this back, this chair kind of back to the to the sculpt, um, which I kind of, which I, it made more sense to me than just having just yeah. a saddle. Um, and it, uh, I kind of enjoyed that. That kind of looked looked looked, looked a lot better. And so I thought having the skull mounted higher up on the top of the. Uh, on the top of the, the back of the chair was 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 um, looks looks pretty cool um and it also kind of gave it something to rest on whereas when it was down here it was bef previously it looked like it was just resting on top of the you know the uh, rucksack or the the rug that we've got there so that's that which is not really really desirable so i'm just going to finish off this chair um and i wanted this chair to be kind of mental a little bit or, or a little bit more designed oh yeah that's nice so it's a little it kind of it's a little bit similar to to the to legs ever so slightly but it's so slightly it looks like it is a chair it's the back of a chair as well so i don't want it to look too organic but i do want it to be kind of i've had in mind that it would be quite nicely designed It's kind of like a little display on the back end of the yeah a fearsome display. So I kind of want to advantage of it. It's just a little attention to detail things like that. I kind of like doing. Mm. Um, it's probably getting too. It's probably getting too detailed at this point because we want to. That's that's kind of where I, what I was thinking of, and then out a bit, and then for this kind of cushion at the back, which gives excellent lumbar support, I might add. Um, <laughs> I have no doubt. <laughs> um, and so, pretty much, you've you've just plonked the figure on there just to uh, have a sense of what he's going to look like, and you you'll come back and yeah. work on that in in more detail. Yes, somewhere definitely. down the line yeah yeah i think well we might try and sort of well we'll have a look in a sec actually i'm i'm, I'm and just see what we you know what how he's how he's made up because you can see he's made up of different bits yeah um and then maybe i will uh, i'll show you kind of how i plan or we can actually have a little play with how we're going to pose him um, yeah i think that will be fun um but yeah we'll save what we've done um because that's important and we must do that and we haven't done that yet um and then um yeah i kind of like that that's a bit better let's... yeah yeah that's, that's kind of cool that's so Knowing you the way I know you, although I don't think we'll we'll do it now, uh, I'm sure you're dying to re-sculpt the face and and change his facial expression a little bit and really sort of uh, you know make it make make it different from just the uh, standing sculpt. Yeah, because I mean this is I've literally ripped this off the the you know the the, the Canada miniature sculpt. Yeah. Um, so I kind of I. I and plonk this on on top of this head so on top of this body so um yeah i will i think what i'll do is i'll go back to um to the symmetrical version and then have a play with some expressions um so you wouldn't um just re uh you wouldn't alter what you've done there you'd actually go back to an earlier stage and re-sculpt uh, from that earlier I, stage I, think that, I, I, w I might try and alter what i've done done here i don't yeah, we, I might do. I, I, I'm not 100% sure, but I think it's a safer way to, to, to go about experimenting with things. 
yeah. um, going back to the previous symmetrical uh, version um, and then you can have a play actually one thing I did realize is I did a lot of sc I sculpted Canada's face very asymmetrically actually um, yeah yeah so well that's how the concept art is isn't it yeah yeah it, it, it very early on I didn't I mean I, I did the symmetrical version I have of Canada is very unlike this final face so that that is that will be a problem so it may be that I do actually go back to this face and and, and just adjust him um, but 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 we'll see. I mean, I, one thing would be nice is to kind of oops, is to kind of um, it's all selected there. Is to kind of maybe play with it now and kind of. Uh, I I think it'd be nice if he's kind of you know I don't know baring his teeth or shouting or doing yeah. something you know. I think having his mouth open would look pretty cool actually. Yeah. Um, let's do that now. Then let's have a little play because um, first I'm just going to eliminate these. Uh, uh, he's looking quite Mad Max, half bald. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he does. I, 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 um, I, uh, I forgot to to cut to take the other part of the hair over from him, so which is quite funny. So I was like, oh, where, what? Why does he look weird? Oh, he's not got <laughs> hair there. <laughs> um, off as well, just to be safe. So you can take that off. Uh, yeah. So. I think, and I have actually, as you can see, his Adam's apple there is actually part of the sculpt, and it merges in with the neck. Um, which is generally how I do stuff. I, I will just take, I plonk the head on to the body after. Um, and there's no eyes in the sockets either, so we'll, we'll add those. But I think what would be nice is for us to explore the expression a bit here, mm. as we've been doing some boring, organic, general, generic, organic stuff. It'd be nice to do like a face. So I'm gonna just I, what we can do is gonna open his mouth, um, which is gonna be yeah. So I'm, I'm interested to see how you're gonna do this. It's difficult. It is actually really difficult, and it does take a bit of patient so whether it's going to work first time or not i don't know but so the five o'clock stubble is a is a mask yes yeah then, <laughs> are you gonna are you gonna invert that mask and then pull the bottom portion down or something yeah exactly that's yeah. exactly what i'm gonna do yeah so um let's cheat a bit and What I'm going to do is save this. So let me just save it first, um, just in case. And then, so yeah, it looks like a fight. Really bad five o'clock shadow. There. <laughs> yeah. Um, now, of course, this is all in the mouth here. There's no, no line or anything. There's no inside that is literally all sculpts. Look, yeah. so we're going to have to actually go in and create that mouth. Um, what they call a mouth bag in the animation industry, I think. Don't quote me on that, but um, that's kind of how I've heard it referred to in the past. Um, so we're just going to open up using the transposal you can ah, see here creepy. where my mask <laughs> it does look really creepy and you can see where my mask is i've got bits it stretches of yeah it stretches so i need to kind of go back and um get rid of that there you go oh, still not quite right i'm not, not going to get yeah, so the, the, the mask is like a um a gradient really yeah exactly it's um Yes, it's exactly that. It's uh, it, it, you can actually blur it even more. Look, you can see yeah. I'm tapping on it; it blurs right. out. So you, if it if it's nice and loose like that, then in fact that's how I should have had it to start with. Um, you see, you get a smoother transition. Yeah, yeah. Whereas if that's I great. kind of it, yeah, it's quite cool, isn't it? Whereas if I make it sharper, yeah, it's obviously because yeah. you're yeah, I see. It's the topology. You've got you're using uh, less pixels to stretch over a wider area. Exactly. Um, so That's definitely horror film uh, material. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is where it's difficult, especially as I've not got symmetry on, because of course it, it's a lot easier and it's quicker, um, and the results you get are a little bit more uniform, um, which sometimes is a lot more desirable. Um, but it would be good to see 
I mean, what, what, I, what I can use it as, is, as we were saying, this is a concept kind of sculpt. So I will go back and see if this works with you. And then we can, if it does work, we can, I can actually do it properly later um, to a better standard, maybe. Yeah. Uh, so you can see here, I'm, I'm, it's crazy. This is, I'm losing resolution here and it's becoming very difficult to sculpt. So I'm just going to go to Dynamesh and add some dynamics you can see that's nowhere near enough resolution so that's uh, more like it so and this is the other problem with mouse is that if i went too high on that resolution it would be very hard to edit as well right so it's just finding the right resolution so um there is going to be a little bit of re-sculpting but as long as i've maintained the right shape uh, i think that it will it will we'll be able to get a fairly decent concept out of it um, creating that mouth box um, it doesn't need to be massive because at the end of the day this is a miniature and none yeah. of that will be printed so what we can do well let's first add some teeth in there actually immediately like it's looking pretty pretty funky yeah. already yeah um well, i'm literally just going to add a cylinder in there if i can actually get it to a pen um Does it get annoying having to make a huge one and make it tiny every time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, yeah. Because <laughs> that just does seem a little bit, uh, like, screwy to me. I have cursed the name of uh, ZBrush <laughs> multiple times for because of the transpose line, which is what this line is called. Um, yeah. But it's also awesome as well. So it's a mixed bag the tool um, looks really cool the way you can just sort of like rotate things and bend yeah. things and what have you it's just the 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 fact that you can't just you know like maybe um drag out a shape or something rather than making a huge cylinder every time um yeah i mean <laughs> that is basically it i mean you literally have to start with primitives but that's the same with most 3d packages anyway really and i think with with dynamesh you can do all kinds of stuff um that, that that's kind of outside the norm as, as such but um yeah it is there are these kind of 3d principles you have to kind of, you have to learn when you first start learning 3d and it they do seem kind of um roundabout ways of doing things <laughs> yeah um, but, but they're, they're not so bad once you learn them once you learn the basics it's, so I've literally just added teeth there, um, and at this scale, you li all you all you need to do is add just a few lines on there. I'm just going to use your cracks again because it is an awesome brush for that. Um, again, we get this is just a concept, so we're gonna yeah we're gonna come back to this, but. Um, always saves at the worst time auto save <laughs> yeah so you get a bit of lag don't you yeah um and then actually this is quite useful because i mean what, what i would do here is just create a tiny indent here but only slight because what's going to happen when we send this to the caster the caster is going to have kittens um, yeah. because they're like we got cast teeth yeah they need to be you know um have this have, be filled afterwards so act, actually this is a really good way of making teeth for miniatures because you've already got that pre-made backfill yeah for everything um <clears throat> what do you think is kind of, is he looking canadary enough or does he look yeah he needs uh, to look a bit angry, i definitely like he? the teeth i think he needs to look angry i think we've got to wrinkle the nose and have his forehead coming right down and maybe maybe he's bulging his eyes um you know sort of a real a real shout he's ugly isn't he <laughs> yeah that's for sure um, so when you shout your nostrils cut when you're angry your nostrils yeah they go flare up like that. Um, and you kind of show a lot of teeth it's very yeah. it's a very teethy emotion anger um 
<laughs> yeah, because you you are literally in in the primate sense, baring your teeth uh, as a weapon. I think his nose, <laughs> his nose looks a bit crazy from the primate. <laughs> so and that's another thing about doing things in three dimensions, isn't it? That you you know you're looking and it looks fine, and then you change the angle and you're like, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His, li his lips are really big, so it's actually yeah. creating this. I'm making sure it's all, it all kind of works. He's looking quite a lot like uh, he should be in the League of Gentlemen at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's, got no, he's got no nose, has he? So that kind of that needs to come down. Um, and... I know. I think I kind of like that. I, I know. I, 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 for a concept, it's like it's it's a bit. It's very fearsome looking. Yeah. And looks a bit weird without eyeballs as well, of course. But um, sorry. The other thing is, I need to pull out this. Yeah, it's really fun seeing you take that face and then just twist it around, um, you know, off the cuff. Yeah, it's it's always fun to sort of take something and then. I That's mean, nice. Uh, the asymmetry yeah. really works there. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like, oh. and you know, I, it's funny. I I have this thing where you kind of. <laughs> If you were to watch me sculpt, I, I'm actually you're making sitting that making expression. the expression. You know what? I'm I'm sitting here making the expression, watching you do it. <laughs> it it's very funny. I'm like I get sort of gurring away, you know. Uh, yeah, well, you uh, you're but, you're seeing how it works, aren't you? You. Um, yeah, yeah. So I kind of I it kind of looks like he's trying to munch like a dry wheat a bit there, but um, <laughs> um, I think yeah, I think as a concept. I kind of like that and um, yeah. what I will be able to do is take that and um, I don't think I need to do a lot with it but make sure it's all correct and um, it works with uh, with the other with the miniature because at the end of the day this is based on another miniature so I want yeah. a bit of continuation there yeah yeah and what I was thinking of doing is maybe if I can I wonder if I can do it now is to mirror this over so that um, it's so that you kind of so that it looks different so that we can get and I mean because he's going to be traveling this way in this direction so his hair is going yeah. to be moving more that way instead of the opposite way so that's where transpose can be really cool because you can actually draw the line out and then kind of adjust and it's crashed <laughs> has it yeah on yeah, blue, oh, yeah, yeah. blue circle. <laughs> okay, so, um, I, I don't yeah. see a blue circle. I, he, oh, have, no, he froze and then he kind of blurred a little bit. Yeah, and it does happen every now and then with 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 the brush. So I'm just going to yeah. restart it. It's, it did save while we were doing stuff, but we've lost a bit of work. So, um, such as well, it is actually very nearly um, nine thirty. So uh, we've reached the end. In any case, I think that's probably right. a good place to pause, don't you? I think so. Yeah. Um, I, I I don't know how you feel. I've had really good fun with it. So um, yeah. So we've not actually lost lot, lost a heck of a lot there, um, but we've kind of lost the expression we had. But I, I think it's not going to be. It's not a hard expression to get again. So. No. And in terms um, of proof of concept, I definitely feel like that's the way to go with him. I don't know what people uh, are viewing think. The only yeah. The only exact. I think I I totally agree that the only problem I have is it's very similar to the uh, mix sculpt in in the in the way that it's. There's one know, arm up. Uh, there's pulling yeah. back on the reins. Yeah, yeah. I do see what you mean. Um. So here's the Nyx sort of sculpt. I'm just. Solo that out if I can well, find I'm, her. I'm not presenting you. Present for everyone. I'm not. Are you screen sharing? Because I'm. Oh, I'm maybe using... I'm not screen sharing. Yeah, no, I can only see your logo. Sorry. There you go. 
Yeah. Yeah, pulling back on the reins with one arm up and shouting. I think the shouting is fine. I'm not fussed at all about that. What else are you going to do when you're on the back of a giant beast well, that, that wants to eat people? <laughs> exactly. I kind of think, yeah, that's kind of what what it does. I can't, in some ways, I kind of like the way that it mirrors the uh, the Nick sculpt in that way. I mean, yeah. they're obviously very very different sculpts, but in the way that they you know they're designed and yeah, that so. Um, um, but yeah, it's slightly similar. So it'd be interesting to see people's thoughts on that. It's not too late to change the pose. Well, I um, I wonder whether I mean if you if you look at a ranch saddle, um, they have like a uh, a kind of knob that you hold onto at the front. He could have the reins yeah, wrapped yeah. around that and be pointing. I like the I, I love I love his oozes. His oozes are really cool. So I'd love to be able to have an, an oozy in his hand or something. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, what's better, hitting someone with a sword or hitting them with a sword and shooting them at the same time? Let's let's um, let's push our luck a little bit and do it very very quickly. And this is why I do everything in bits. Yeah. Because I can literally just repose it. Um, yeah, I've tried using that transpose tool, and I just sit staring at it and 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 fiddling around and doing exactly the opposite of once of what I wanted to do. Um, so watching practice, you yeah. do it so fluidly is impressive. Yeah, it does take a bit of practice. I'm, I've I've used this for a long time as well, so it does that. Of course, that helps. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it would be nice to have like a three D gizmo. You know what? I I also I like the gangster shooting. He is, after all, a gangster. Uh, he's got he's got a mean ass gat, hasn't he? Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Um, too much NWA as a kid, I think. Really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's, it's quite. I mean, of course, his trigger finger's not out and that, and it's not quite perfect, but. Um, I like that. It's kind of. <laughs> Yeah, I do too. I think it looks. I think that looks pretty good. It also saves the uh, the the slight technical problem of having a thin rain. Yeah, which I was really struggling yeah. with. I was like, well, I'll put it there, but we need to think about yeah. how we're going to work. And th there's another thing <clears throat> from an assembly point of view that I find with miniatures, where you have you almost have a triangle that the three the three parts are interreliant. They, they never go together right because um, no. you've no. you've always I think people people don't fully understand that that with with metal miniatures you kind of I mean, it's true of resin as well actually not so much plastic but you do actually have to bend the metal a little bit sometimes you know mm. as the metal the it might uh, you know the the master copy and the mold might be perfect mm. but the metal changes shape very very slightly as it as it cools. And yeah. so things get pulled very slightly out of shape. And so sometimes you just need to give it a nudge. Um, what, uh, definitely Miria is like that. When people get their Miria yeah. sculpt, the, I can't remember which leg it is, but it's the leg that is attached to the flame. Yes. That just needs a tiny little bend, and it's just the way what the the mass of the metal, the way it cools, that leg just gets pulled very slightly out of shape. And the sculpt actually mm. goes together beautifully if you nudge that just a millimeter, yeah. half a millimeter upwards, and yeah. I, I suspect that um, when you've got the head that goes on the body, the reins that goes on the hand, and the hand that goes on the uh, body or whatever, you've got those three components all uh, connecting with each other. Yeah. It's it's going to be awkward be a, for some people. Tricky one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, that's good then. But and I I kind of like that. It's like uh, it's definitely it does look very New Jack City sort of stuff, and it's like, <laughs> like and, a, and a bit of like uh, and, and I'm going to add some like Far Eastern sort of design in there, like um uh, samurai kind of uh, uh, samurai um, cavalry have this kind of tied bow sort of rope. Thing that I'm going to put in there just for a bit of fun. Um, yeah, yeah, just I like that. Little bit of, there's all little, little bits of details I plan, but I plan on doing. But I kind of, for this session, I kind of wanted to show kind of how I move from like um, almost uh, nothing really onto kind of nearly nearly finished in terms yeah. of structure and design.
yeah, uh, skull. Yeah. I mean, we haven't had time to pose a mantis. It will be posed a little bit better. Like the head will be turned, and maybe we'll organise the feet less sy symmetrically. Yeah. Um, but I think we also need to think about how that goes on the base, and there's all other things that we need to consider. Yeah. Um, and I think it's worth taking our time on this one because it's a it's a really fun sculpt. Yeah, he's really. He, uh, uh, there's the <laughs> the same with the next sculpt. It's a real yeah. standout. You know wow uh wow miniature um which is going to really look awesome on the battlefield yeah i, I hope so um uh, he's, he's been awesome fun so far and so um i hope uh, i hope again he gets unlocked for you and uh well um, we're yeah. we're only about 800 pounds away i think wicked um, that sounds great so <laughs> it sounds like it's going to happen sometime uh before the end fingers crossed oh yeah. no we are 507 pounds away really? um i was kind of hoping somebody would jump on a gene splicer pledge so we could uh, have a chance of unlocking it while it was being sculpted live on air that would have been really cool but uh that would have been good you can't have everything <laughs> no you can't <laughs> <laughs> well james that's been brilliant i have really well, enjoyed it i hope yeah. everyone else has as well and thank you everyone out there for uh for watching um and uh yeah as soon as we get some uh final renders of this i will throw them up as an announcement obviously it will be after the kickstarter ends but but just because the kickstarter ends doesn't mean that the fun will no definitely not <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much james you've been, you've been a star cheers excellent thank you thank you cheers. all right guys take good care oh and subscribe to the channel please Yes, <laughs> I, should, I should do all that sort of stuff, shouldn't I? Yeah. Um, but yeah, brilliant. All right, and we'll do another one of these, I reckon, sometime. Yes, I would love to. Excellent. Okay. Cheers. Cheers.